I'll tell you something. I think fans, I get a lot of people in Washington, D.C. that watch the show that tell me, Shills, will we ever get better? I said, yeah. When you get leadership in the front office, I love Adams. When you, when, 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 when you get leadership in the front office and you were able to get an owner in there that understands putting proper people in right positions and you have a good dynamic with Magic being involved in this thing, then you get the quarterback. Can you imagine Washington, D.C. good again? Let's bring in a guy who was during those times when they were champions and they were constantly in the room for being considered around the rim when it came to winning Super Bowls. Doc Walker, who's been covering the team for decades, and also on top of that, owner of three Super Bowl rings. Our dear friend joins us now. And long time coming, Doc. Long time coming. Here we are, three and one, first place. How you feeling about it? Well, I'm I'm tickled I'm tickled to death <clears throat> to have won September. Because you know, um the only way it works is that I mean the talk radio hosts, the amateurs are talking Super Bowls and playoffs. The veterans understand it's a week to week conquest. You don't climb Mount Everest in one leap. It's a series of steps. And the wind will be blowing, some days it'll be wet. And so I don't try to deluge take anybody's thrill away we're in a wagering fantasy the game has changed that we played now you don't have to be good to make money <laughs> you don't have to be good to have a following because you get a guy with a couple of frosty beverages in his hand and a good wagering line he'll sit through and watch any garbage <laughs> so they're not as demanding as our people were and so there's also so many bad coaches and GMs and player personnel people, imposters, friends of friends and family. So the guys who are really strong have dragged in so much garbage into the industry that it, it, it just, it contaminates it. And so you end up with the Washingtons and the, and the Carolinas. It, it has to. There's, there's a waste management system in every ecosystem. And then the only way you purify it is get rid of the junk, the contaminants, and you got to bring in workout artists. You got to bring in people that don't take any crap, that are purists. So when you get an Anthony Lynn on your staff as a running back coach, that's a, an embarrassment of riches. This is one of the best staffs I've seen. I can't wait to see how this thing ends up just based on the fact that, you know, from Peters down, when well, you mentioned Bethard, Hall of Famer, everybody you mentioned in our past is in the Hall of Fame. But it didn't start off there. People going, who is Joe Gibbs? Bobby Bethard was in Miami, but who is with, with Shula? Yeah, right. So everybody has to be sitting at the knee of old school football purists, not car artists, not one-shot Sally's, and in the end, it's O-line, D-line world. You know what it is. All this wide receiver talk, love them. It's a rim. It's a hubcap. It ain't the damn axle or the wheel. It's a hubcap. And so once you get it going, man, so once our bigs are now coming together, and once we get this D-line on the same page, brother, you can start sending out invitations once they get, if they get it fixed. If you don't, you won't. But if they get it fixed, then uh, a return to glory is definitely something that I can imagine. So then you're not surprised with what Brian Johnson and Cliff Kingsbury, he got a bad rap here, Doc, Brian Johnson. And Brian Johnson's offense was eighth in total offense, and they were like sixth in scoring a year ago. All these guys had career years outside the quarterback, and he was a scapegoat. And now when I'm watching Dayton Daniels getting better week in and week out, you see Cliff Kingsbury, who's had Patrick Mahomes and, and it, under his – Kyler Murray, worked with Caleb Williams a year ago at Southern Cal. And now you see what he's doing with him. You mentioned Anthony Lynn. God, I didn't realize the staff was that deep. What? I mean – 
Have you been surprised with what and how Jaden Daniels' progress has come along? No, I, I think it's ignorant. It would be ignorant on my part to be surprised if a Heisman Trophy winner that's at LSU playing a Saturday night in bigger games than anybody in the NFC East has been in, in a decade. <laughs> I mean, the, the only thing I'm the only thing I'm a little caught off guard is that, and I don't agree with they don't play them in the preseasons, which I'm a hundred percent against. I think why Bobby Wagner should have played. I think you can't imagine you can't walk through pro football games. You, you you have to play the game. You have to develop a callus. Defenders, I don't know how a defensive player can play without tackling in camp. For the life of me, these four kids come out of college. They have they they've never had to tackle, and then they're criticized when they get into the pro football game against elite backs. So this is an ignorance that continues to perpetrate itself through the NFL. They'll eventually catch up if they want to. Look, dude, I'm preaching to the choir. They're making their money, money, dollar bill. They don't have to fix anything because we're all addicts. We're going to watch the garbage they put up every week, no matter what, till it fixed. It fixes. In November, it'll be fixed. And we all know it'll be fixed. So we sit through it. If the Bengals lose two or three, we go, oh, you know they'll be back. We all know that people with elite quarterbacks and skilled people will eventually be around the corner when we come there. So uh, I hate it, but I've learned now. Nobody's listening. Sit through it and then wait and see. I mean, look, um, watching an old line come together, as you well know, because you had to try to beat them your whole life. They got to love each other, man. You know, because it's the things they have to communicate with silence. They have to play on the road as well as at home. And we saw the Jets game. A little simple thing like a sna- It's nothing simple about it. And, and then you look at, at the pro level. They can't get a snap count together. Why? Because three of the five guys are brand new. You know, and one of the guys, I don't know who he was, decided maybe he didn't need to come to an OTA or a camp or whatever. So they thought whatever they had planned in their offseason was a little more important than reps. So live with it. You can't get to where you want to get in this game being half in and half out. I don't care who you are. That's the beauty of this game. So we'll see. But by November, it'll all be worked out. Cream will ride to the, to the top. And you mentioned Johnson. He was okay at Buffalo, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, because he had a beast. Because he had a beast at quarterback, you know, and his head coach is a is a guy I go into a bar fight with any day of the week. The dude is grit tough. And you just knew that they would come around. I I I bet on Buffalo because how they're built. There ain't nothing fake about them. So that it all comes down to who's running your program, what your ethical code is all about, and are you a con artist a lot, like a lot of mine. All those get exposed. Look, we got 30 new players. You've been doing this forever. When's the last time you've seen a team with 30 new players? All right? Doesn't That's work. the roach-infested house that was left here. Absolutely, Doc. I mean, Doc, the environment then. I mean, let's start at the very top here because obviously Josh Harris owns the Sixers in Philly. We're based in Philly. Um, do the fans feel it? Do you feel it? Does it? Oh feel yeah. It? Well, it, for, new? he's, he's uh, he bought some brewskis uh, during the summer. We're doing a, a deal out of by by Nats Park, open arena, and he didn't have to. The guy buys everybody in the whole area, area we're in, open area a cold one he's hit he's dunked on everything he's done and it's not hard for him because he's not fake you know his wife comes out she's real they're not plastic they're real people whether or not that translates in championship really doesn't matter we just needed somebody that was authentic and he's authentic and the people that he picked that are around him they're all authentic you know, so I judge you by not only your character, but the people you hang around. The group you put around, thumbs up. 
And and so then we judge him by who he picks. Look, they can never knock it out of the park the way they did last year. Because I would have blown that whole group they had out the moment I signed the paper. He didn't. Because <laughs> if he does that, he doesn't get Jaden Daniels. He knew they would, wouldn't win. That was genius. See, I would have overreacted. He didn't. He looked at that group and said, all I got to do is leave them in charge. They'll F it up. And sure enough, so he gets to crown jewel. And you can't convince me that had they had the number one pick, they wouldn't have taken Jaden Daniels. And that's what nobody really wants to deal with. But that's huh. what I believe. Huh. Interesting. Dan Quinn. You mentioned him a little bit here. Have you been surprised? No, nope, no, nope, because I, you know, I love how people ridicule a guy who, first of all, the Legion of Doom, he won me over there. He won me with Atlanta, but the Legion of Doom, you know why? Because he took a group of roughnecks and got them to play like a gang. And not first rounders. They were Cam Chancellor and all them guys were late. No, he don't, who, Look, the only one that really needs them is somebody that's not good at teaching. Yeah. If you're not a good teacher, you need A students. But the best teachers that we grew up with through, through our education system, they take me and turn me into an A plus or B, a B plus student. Teaching is an art. Most coaches, you we've had them, they're not even good communicators. How the hell are you going to teach somebody something when you can't even get them to like you? And if I don't <laughs> like you, I'm not going to learn from you because I'm going to cut my in, my head brains off. What we have now is communicators. Dan Quinn is a communicator. Instantly comes in, doesn't care what you think. The lid backwards, the whole thing, got his own thing. I'm just not a plastic band guy. I like to fit it backwards. I like that. I'd love to get him to <laughs> get his own brand. But you know what? But then it wouldn't be Dan. He's off it. That's who he is. So be him. He's criti- He's criticized for losing a Super Bowl in his first year. I go, who does that? But you'll you'll deal with these people who've never even gotten to a championship game, but he gets criticized. So you know what? People forget that Mike Shanahan was a horrible coach in with the Raiders, and that Belichick was awful with Cleveland in their first times around because they didn't really know how to be an organizational type of coach because you're more in that role than you are when you're just a position slash overseeing one side of the ball. And that's Mm -hmm. a transition too, Doc, that many people don't understand that if players go through a transition, coaches and coordinators all go through those same transitions. Well, I'll take Belichick's beginning because I remember being in Cleveland in that locker room covering it. Westwood won, and Mark Mosley kicks the field goal. They win a playoff game. But look who he had on the staff, too. I remember Ozzie Newsom being in that locker room. Look at the studs that he had. I think Nick was there. Yeah, I Nick Sterling. Yeah, so Nick was there. Oh, look, Saban. Man. Saban. Yes, Nick Saban, Saban was in there. Yep. Yeah, going right. So Bill Belichick, his worst day is your best day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. If he loses, it's in the championship or Super Bowl. All I'm saying is that they're so fundamentally sound. And what do they all have in common? They're all gym rats. They're not trying to win. They're not trying to go to Congress and speak on the Hill as some coaches. No names need to be mentioned because you know you know who all of them are. They're constantly running their mouth and saying nothing. These guys don't want to say anything to you at all unless you're talking ball. You know, they and they're, and they're one track. I'm not looking for a guy – that's trying to win a contest of Mr. Male of the Year. I want an X and an O guy and a little, having some issues and helping through those. Because, you know, this is a game where sometimes you might have some off-the-field things that you need help with. That guy's got to be able to feel that and understand you. And even if he can't deal with it, he gets you to somebody that can. That's what a boss does. They don't have to handle everything, but they know somebody that can fix things. Doc, Joe Madden, Joe Madden told me, the former manager of the Rays in Chicago, yeah. said, he said to me, he goes, you know how you connect with guys that are in your dugout? He said, you have to have a personal relationship with each and every single one of them so mm-hmm. that you can be constructive instead of destructive. Because if right. you can't communicate with them, you're going to come off as a destructive guy. 
So is that's where is that where Dan Quinn sits on? Is that he's yeah, got a personal really, relationship with this with this roster? I, I believe that to, I believe that to be true. If he's as cordial and, and as connective as he is when you meet him for the first time with a stranger whose only link is being an alum, what the heck is he like if he's work you're working for him? So also watching one of their practices or two of their practices, there's energy. So they went from the walking dead as an atmosphere to where it's just like you want to almost go get their blood checked. And you know grown-ass men that get paid to do this? You can't fake them. They don't fake them. You know what I mean? College, college for an extra steak sandwich or whatever, we'll do and say anything. But once you get a little of that cheddar, so I got to believe it. And these dudes jump around like it's a collegiate atmosphere. And I always say collegiate is the best way to frame it. And you know, and I'll go back to something close to your heart, the you. I, I'm waiting, and I'm, I'm sitting there watching, and it was bad for Tech. That Tech U thing, but what I couldn't help but see is Michael Irvin on the sideline. Mike is set, but when I see he was more fired up than any player that played for Miami that night. <laughs> you can't get people that are that accomplished. That You can't fake that. And so what you guys have always represented that I've always been jealous of is that it's a genuine connection for life. It can't be broken. It, 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 it's something that win, lose, or tie, it's a commitment to building. And now you guys are thirsty to get back to the bright lights and do it in a way. And I'm watching you sell yourself to these young, because these young people are different now. Because you oh, got to yeah. get through they, you got to get through their phones. Yeah. You got to get through all these distractions. And you guys are straight universal weights, outdoor cage. You don't need no accoutrements. You know, y'all don't need nothing fancy. That's <laughs> what I love about it. Because you dudes come at it from a caveman standpoint. You know, it's dead weight. It's ev- and y'all just roll. That's why I love Miami Hurricane alums. But now going into this NIL version, I'm just sitting back patiently to seeing how you guys navigate through this. Because we need guys like you to interject these youngsters. This is a make-believe situation. Don't fall prey to this NIL garbage. You well, still got to go out and earn it. Hey, hey, Doc, so I did a show last night with Lamar Thomas. Mm-hmm. And he was, you know, former Miami Dolphin, Miami oh, Hurricane, yeah. obviously. He's one of my guys yeah. forever. Yeah, uh, he, he, was, he was a freshman there, and I was mm-hmm. – my last time there. And he goes, Sills, please. And I go, for you, man, anything. I've never been in a situation outside of my current family that I've been involved with for 35 years. And I've been married for 35 years that I love more in my life than every single teammate that I ever had. So I text Michael Irvin and he's on the sidelines. Mario Cristobal and I obviously are dear friends too. His brother I yeah. played with. He yeah. goes, I go, what would you, would you make a mic? He goes, well, do you think he's any different than he was when he was 19 years old and where he's 60 years old? I go, no, he's the same teammate now. And he loves that program so much. You got to remember. Clinton Doc, Portis, CP, the same way, dude. CP, Tana, all these dudes. And that's what I love about him. Sean Taylor. There ain't nothing fake about it. Oh, man. But there's nothing fake about any of them when it comes to that. You know, and they back it up, too. They don't just talk. They put the money where their mouth is. And even more so, they'll take a personal interest in mentorship. No, it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Do you do that with the young? I saw Doug. I I text Doug. And I saw Jaden Daniels hugging on. That's another part of Jaden. Yeah. I saw Jaden Daniels. No, give Dan Quinn the credit. How about this? I asked asked her, man. let him in the meetings. What? Say that again. Yeah. The last group of rocket scientists that ran that trash program wouldn't even let him interface with players, and especially the quarterback. Now he is has a, he has a relationship. You see the difference? Yeah. How do you not give an MVP, a guy who went through what he went through? When you know what he was called. Now, I'll tell you what. As much as I love the you and what they mean for, there's some nasty people in your pro town and what he had to endure in Tampa 
that was ungodlike. Hey, hey, Doc, okay. Doc, Doc. He's Leroy Salmon is was one of my best friends, and Doug is one of my best friends. I've had him on this program numerous times, and I'll just to tell people what Doc's talking about. His wife dies. They had a contract on the table, and it was for less money. And he had led the Buccaneers for the five years he was a starting quarterback. Mm -hmm. And he said, I can't pay you more than Leroy. And he's like, wait a minute, I'm the quarterback. And that racist owner, Culverhouse, I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say that, but mm -hmm. you Culverhouse um, made him leave, go to the USFL, and the only guy mm -hmm. that gave him an opportunity really to come out and go into the NFL and why he's revered as a Redskin now slash commander. Yeah. Because Doug Williams got a chance to go to Washington. And I asked him this question. This shows you kind of man he is. I said there was five seconds in San Diego on the clock when you had beaten Denver for the Super Bowl and you were going to be named the MVP. Weren't you just thinking, F you, Hugh? He goes, you know. Too much had gone through my life. I'd lost my wife. I had all these other trials and tribulations. Remember, he wasn't even a starter that year. Mm -hmm. You know, and I was like, what a man of character. I just, I love Doug Williams. And to hear you say that the organization and Dan Snyder and those guys didn't allow him to communicate with the players. And I, they had a little bit of that down in Tampa with him too when it came to the Glaziers. But to hear that they're allowing him because the no, the wealth of knowledge, and you know this as well as I, Doc, we know him so well that there's a back. He was, you know, he was supposed to be the Kentucky Wildcat head coach, but because he was black, they didn't give it to him. And Doug had told me that he was up for numerous jobs. He could never get a decent job. And I don't mean any disrespect to Grambling, but I'm like, he never got one of those jobs like Dion got because he was black. That's why he went to the NFL. So to see his journey where he is and how he's revered in D.C. amongst the guys like you and the guys who had won all them Super Bowls, I, I'm so happy for him to be a figure in that place and watch Jaden Daniels hug him. I thought that – see, I looked at that more than what it was just for video for me. That mm -hmm. That's something that that player connected with him and understood. Yeah, I, and I was just to start. I, I think Doug's got a whole lot to give football. And I'm hoping I have no insight. I don't, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't spoken to him recently, but I'm hoping that this is just a start because he's a football brainiac and he's not been given that credit. You know, this guy. And so let's hope. Yep. Absolutely. Here. Two last ones here for you here, Doc. Doc, is the offensive line coming into shape because they're doing things schematically that Cliff Kingsbury's doing? They're getting the ball out of his hands quick because that was a question mark for me for the commanders this year going into this season was it looked like you guys were going to have musical chairs on that offensive line side. But for the first couple of weeks, that's not been the case. They look awful good and they look yeah. like they're in sync, but still a question mark still for you, that old line. Not me. I mean, Wiley, I'm so proud of Wiley because he's a, he's staying on his feet. He delivers a blow, and they get to the second level. Um, Cornelius Lucas, first time he started yeah. in his career. And if I were able to see him, I say, you know, I love the fact that I always enjoyed him because he could fill it on both sides. Not a lot of people could do that. They're a right tackle but or a left. But the guy that – that's why I always trusted him because he could do both. And now – but I never thought that he envisioned himself as a starter. You got to believe that. And they brought in – Coleman was a very talented young buck. And now he's getting a little less than half those slot snaps. And so he can gradually build his deal. He's an animal. Road grader. You can just tell what's going to happen, where he's coming. Now he doesn't get thrust into it. But you know this league. Until you play against Reggie White, Lawrence Taylor, <laughs> you know, Ed, uh, Too Tall Joe, and that's when you start judging where you're at. And this week against Cleveland, because you know, there's six man-eaters in this league to play at that defensive end spot. So I don't even start evaluation until you play in that week. 
and one's in the division. And, and so that's the beauty about this. You can talk all you want to talk. We'll see. And this week is a show me week for the commanders. Absolutely. Miles Garrett's that guy you're talking on the beast. other beast. in this division. You're also talking about Michael Parsons. Finally, here mm -hmm. to you, Doc. Do you see them being a player in this? Their name has been brought up with Devontae Adams on putting him on the other side of Terry McLaurin, who, by the way, I'll say it to you. I think he's the most underrated wide receiver in the National Football League. I mean, the BS that that guy's had to go through. I mean, this guy was catching footballs. Not that Sam sucks, but we're not talking about elite status kind of guy here. Can you imagine somebody with somebody on the other side of him? You'd have the best wide receiving core, and that includes Philly. If you put Devontae Adams and Terry McLaurin together, I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be sold. Washington's got something going on there with, with, with that dynamic. And you got Austin Eckler back there. I'm, I'm liking that dynamic. Do you think they could pull that off? I'm going to stay true because I know your listeners, we share some listeners. And I don't want them to call me. Um, this weekend on the air and say, I heard you with Dan. You never talk wide receiver. And I don't. Because I, I with James Arthur Monk, when you play with Art Monk, Gary Clark, seeing the work of the posse and these guys, what I like about the group we have now, they all, are, this is the best blocking group of wide receivers oh. I've ever seen on this team. This is Luke McCaffrey, man, Noah Brown. So, those guys are great that we're mentioning they're out there because of seven on seven camps. There's a flood of talented wide receivers. But when I see like the Dolphins have two great ones, they can't win a game. No, they're not. I just don't equate wide receivers <clears throat> to, to winning championships. Doc, stop there for a second. Listen, I say this. You were in the era of Bavaro. And you guys were defined differently. I've had Mark on. Him. I love Mark. And oh, he's a badass. Bad, and, but but you and him had a different identity of what the position was. I yeah. say this all the time about these guys. And by the way, Devontae Smith and AJ and uh, CD bad and all boys. these guys. Bad, bad boys. boys. But why is it when I look around the league, I don't see any of those guys Super Bowl champions. None of those guys are champions. I mean, Tyreek Kill, when he got his money, it was in Miami. It wasn't in Kansas City. And you look at Kansas City. They're a better football team without him. They're going for their third straight title. Doc, am I crazy when I say, Devontae Adams is not winning you a Super Bowl. Justin Jefferson's not winning a Super Bowl in Minnesota. I mean, look at what, what Stefan Diggs, he's on his third team now in four years. Am I wrong when I say this, Doc? These wide receivers, it's more about the continuity of the group that you're talking about more than just having those primary targets. And they're all great. I love gig. I'm a Stefan Dick. Stefan Dick. <clears throat> they're the best. They're all great. But Minnesota's showing you right now. Minnesota's showing you right now that, that defense with the way they're playing ball with two outstanding coaches, one, and I'm just praying that they're, I'm praying for their success because Flory's, he took one for the league. Everybody knows that that was an injustice. This dude can coach. He might be Belichick's lone pupil that can win a Super Bowl because it's been hard coming off Bill's tree and having life. This dude is killing the league right now. But and I and you can't win without an ace receiver. You got to have some badasses. Devontae had it in Green Bay. Only problem was his partner and him, some, something happened. Yep. They were magic. I loved watching them work. But, you know, Aaron and Aaron's a bad man. Again, it's like entertainment. You want to go to a movie and say, I'm going to see Aaron Rodgers going to the movie. But I'm not betting on them to win. The big one, you know, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. So it's what do you want? You want to be entertained or you want to win? I have to win. It's like oxygen for me. So you go be entertained. I'm not picking nobody just for entertainment. I have to win. So I'm keep taking Terry. And, and I'll tell you what, in the end, we'll see you there. If we have the play call and we're getting right now in this town, because you know what it is, balance. It is, and everybody blocks. Watch, 
if you want to see, because you, you love football, you want to see football, offensive football, an unselfish version of it, cut on the tape in Arizona and watch from tight ends, tackles, backs, backside. Look at the backside. People that you would have thought that I always judge backside. Backside to me is every. I want to judge you. I'm watching you on the backside. They act as if they don't get their blocks on the backside and get over across the face of the defender. They don't get a ride home. That they have to go home on their own. <laughs> that's how I know the coaches are the message is coming through. We don't we don't have stats freaks. Nobody worrying about their stats. They're worrying about that scoreboard being lit up with W. Do we win? So that's what I see here. So Devontae, all of them cool, man. They're great. I ain't mad at them. Please keep them away from here. <laughs> because our mission requires that we win the game, not the stats. You know, you you mentioned backside, and I'm like, how many times did you and I put on a game film and you watch Taylor come down that backside flat and just blow the play up because Try to of cut the, him off <clears throat> because of the Dude. endless pursuit he had coming from the how many times if you didn't have a guy block him, he would go scrape down the line of scrimmage, play. chase that play down, play. and blow the play up from behind. He was like the forefront guy. Most people get in pursuit. He just run down that line and he would blow that play up because he was so electric. I it's mean, like Parsons. Look at they, look at what in Pittsburgh. Yep, does the same you stuff. Know, look at Crosby with, with, with the Raiders. You can't cut on a film. I don't know how his teammates watch film with him. It'd be embarrassing. Yeah, to be in the film room with these dudes and you on the same team with them, and you watching them and you look at. Why doesn't every? Why doesn't it look like that's my whole point? So when I look at that, you ask me what I want. Give me a boast. Give me why you had a wide receiver. They're nice. I ain't mad at them. Give me one of them dudes that never stops until they get they they chase it after like it's life. It's oxygen. Yeah. And it, it, when, when you see you watch Noah, and again people go, yeah, Noah Brown. Well, who picked him? Peters and his boy. See, so somebody said, well, he couldn't quite make tech. That's okay. We'll take him. <laughs> Washington yeah. had four, three or four players picked off their practice squad. That hadn't happened since I had an afro. <laughs> <laughs> That's my whole point. You want to know you're doing well? People want your puppies. Yeah, I'm just telling you, dude, this this is it's a new day yeah. in the District of Columbia, brother. Absolutely. You better buy you if you some stock. I advise you to invest now. Otherwise, you won't be able to afford it later. Doc, are people coming back to the stands? Man, there's so much gear. Like most people that are my age in our group, they don't like anything, the name, and all. they don't want nothing to do with I, it. I hate the name too. Yeah, but <clears throat> the jerseys, they don't like the cut. But the last three weeks or whatever, you can't go anywhere here and not see. And, I, and I'm happy for them. Yeah. Because they needed to brand themselves. I mean, you go out there, half of the stuff is our stuff. Now, you, I've seen more of their version of Burgundy. And they did it on purpose. And they probably did it for the right reason. I wouldn't have done it that way. I would have stuck with the, the same colors and done that. But, I'm, you know, what? That's hey me. Doc, why didn't they just go to the R with the with the yellow with the yellow helmet in the R and just go with that and take the face off? Because I mean, there's now even people, there's even know. now indigenous people that are like, we don't have a problem with it now. You cut a deal yeah. like Seminole Indians did with Florida State. You cut a deal yeah. with them, you give them a percentage of the merchandise, and all of a sudden we're people, all good. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, money, money changes everything. <laughs> but I'll say I'll say I also believe this. They keep winning. No one anyway, cares. What is it? <laughs> Nobody cares. That's why I go. And we think about the name. Sure, I miss ours. I respect ours, love ours. They start, but but I respect them and I respect the people wearing the uniforms, the people representing burgundy and gold. I just want them to win. For God's sake, just get out of last place. It is so embarrassing. It has been such I've been humiliated. And I'm just glad now that 
that seems to be over. The curse, I believe the curse has ended. I do and, too. And that's good. Yeah. You bet. Doc, great stuff. And thank you for always finding so much time for me. You always do. And thank you again. I'm so happy. I'm going to say it. I'm sorry, man. I'm so happy to see the Redskins back because, again, that's one of the greatest fan bases yeah. of all time and one of the greatest identities of all time. I'm sorry. I'm still not feeling commanders and cowboys yet. But, hey, maybe I get there if they go six and one. Maybe well, I get you, it. Well, I mean, you will. And you know you will. I will. You know, you will. But if they I took will. that you off that helmet, you'd, have, you'd be raising the mail. Oh, yeah. Just imagine no if way. they change your logo. No way. No, I'm just telling you. No You're just happened. ripped out. Part of your heart gets ripped out. They changed the colors of the hurricane. What? No, not happening. No. Well, hey, I'm just telling you. I won't even go to Hard Rock because I played at the Orange Bowl. And I have a problem right. with Hard Rock because you played also at the Orange Bowl. And you yeah. played at RFK. So when you walk into that new place, you must do this. I don't know. <laughs> Well, no, I never played it, so I don't have. I don't, there's no emotion. Yeah, there. yeah. It's just, it's just, it's just. But if, the, but I want them to win. Yes, I want course. everybody to experience what I experienced. Wow, you know. Well, that would be three Super Bowl championships. Well, it, yeah. Well, it'd been in two, one, one. But I, I just want them to. You know what it's about? Whether you win the East or you win the NFC or you win the Super Bowl, as long as you're winning, you're doing okay. You know, it's just like I say, it's like college. As long as whatever the bowl are in, you've been in it and you won it, you're doing okay. Doc, can I get sneak in one last one with you? Yeah. When you played in that era, Giants, Eagles, Cowboys. Cardinals. What was – Cardinals, right. I forgot. NFC East, that's right. They were in the East. Um, what was the biggest and toughest games you played during your time when you when you guys were world champions, who was it? Giants, Cardinals, Eagles, and Dallas. Dallas was last. Well, it does, it's, the order is the same. It does. It, that's the difference. Everybody goes, "What was the difference?" There was no difference. Oh, you Reggie White. So you want to pick between Ed <laughs> Tuttle Jones, Harvey Martin? Or Reggie White and, and Brown, who were another freak. They were all freaks. Are oh, you talking about Jeter? You're talking about uh, Brown? They're all Taylor. freaks. Taylor? They're all freaks. So it was a freak show. That's why I go. Harvey NFC Martin. East. Harvey Martin. Harvey, Harvey Martin. It had no peers. It has no peer. So wait Harvey. a minute. You you lined up. You lined up as a tight end against. Ed, Ed, Ed Tutal Jones. Ed Tutal Jones. Martin. So these guys come out to see Ed Tutal Jones Six, in a nine. uniform. It was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen in, in my life. To Let see. me tell you, playing yeah. next to him, I used to think he could eat a bowl of soup off my head. <laughs> but I'm just saying, it's like uh, like when people saw Dave Butts when they play us. Oh. Butsy, I mean, that was the huge, biggest human being I'd ever seen. When I was in that, you come I out. I had a go, 20 foot. Yeah, but Reggie White. Yeah. You know, Dwight White, it, but the Steelers, they had Dwight White, Mad Dog. L.C. Um, Greenwood. L.C. Greenwood. Mean Joe. Jack Ham, the Hammer. Every era had dogs, man. So it's just like, you just respect the game. But I looked at the East, I go, what are people talking about? The East has always been that rare beast because there was no off week. So you talking about, man, now they're waiting on the big game. No, it was every week there was a war. It just depended on what part of the world you were playing it at. But there was no difference because everybody – it was an O-line, D-line league too. Yeah, and, and, like running, now. and running backs and running backs. And running backs, backs. Yeah. Everybody had a back. Yeah, yeah everyone had yeah, a so back then. This now is, you know, it's cute and it's three wides and <laughs> it's all that stuff, yeah. And everybody had that too. But the bread and butter was time of possession, show yards and goal line. You either got it or you don't, you know. And my boy, World Grant here, I mean, it's like, it's just, it's a different deal. But when you watch, like, you know, practice, to see Grimm and World Grant going at it, it just, you saw them. 
the wars in practice. Russ Grimm. Grimm and, and World Grant, I'm telling you, Man. why these dudes, how they're conscious, how their brains function now, seeing Dexter and, and Jake, seeing George Stark, Tony McGee, seeing all these guys. Mark May. The way they were hand slapping May Dog, who's nasty by disposition, and he wakes up with a in a bad mood. And then and then Riggins to finish it off. Yeah, I mean John run into you full speed. Oh, you yeah. ain't live you ain't loving life. You know, and he <laughs> did it on purpose. You know, JR loved running over people. He wasn't trying to evade you. He's trying to hurt you. A whole different era, man. But these kids now, they got some beat. It's nice. It's nice. Well, I mean, just as long as they're doing this. Excuse me, Doc. Hang on for a second. Let me yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, well that's the coach's what fault. <laughs> I bet they weren't doing that in New England. Oh, no, 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 no. There was a rule in New England from what I was told by Scott Pioli that when you checked in, you checked your phone in, and if you had a problem, you had to uh, talk to your position coach or any coach, you had to go talk to him face-to-face. -face. Bill never allowed texting going on inside the facility when, you know, he was up there. And it's funny because Brady was on the broadcast and Mayfield said something about it not being fun. When when Brady was there, and Brady he snapped back at him, said, "Well, I didn't know winning championships was a whole bunch of fun. If I wanted a whole bunch of fun, what I would have done is taken my kids to Disneyland. That's where I'm going to have fun. But for winning championships, hard work, dedication, and understanding what it takes to be a champion, hosting that championship trophy up is fun." And I was like, "Wow, okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah." Losers tend to focus a lot more on fun. The winners do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> yeah. God. And, and they, may, they may live a lot longer, too. Absolutely. Doc, thank you yeah. so much, my All friend. Right, deal. You got it. The great Doc Walker, part of the broadcast team for the Washington Commanders, owner of Super Bowl championships, too. God, I love the guy so much. He does such a great job broadcasting live in D.C. all those years, covering that team. And I have to agree with him. You know, let's wait and see. They won the first month of the season for sure, right? So I love Doc. Doc has been a friend of mine forever here. By the way, bottom of the hour, our friend Xander Krause is going to join us. But do not forget, our dear friends at BetUS, you're looking for a new betting house? This is your place, my friends. We are so proud to be teamed up with our friends at BetUS here at Jacob Sports, giving you an opportunity at the YouTube 150. The YouTube 150 gives you an opportunity. How about this? A signing bonus of up to 2K of 150%. Your second, your second sign-up bonus is 125, along with your third is a 125% sign-up bonus. All you have to do is go to betus.com.pa. That's betus.com.pa. Fastest payouts in the business. 24-7 personalized service, 365 days of the year, live wagering on all major games. Like tonight's Thursday night game, you got college football on Friday, college on Saturday, and pro football on Sunday. Make sure you go to betus.com.pa. That's betus.com.pa. And do me a favor, you tell them Big Sill sent you. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.